Right, so this isn't the best um, clear part I've ever seen. We've got some spidering in there. Um, hopefully it'll disappear a little bit, but it's pretty rubbishy. Um, so I'll just trim down where the gate was. Don't trim too close because you always get sort of stress marks in the plastic, which doesn't matter when they're not clear. I'll be able to sand that down. So I'm just taking these ejector pin marks out. And then I'm going to use good old reliable emery board just to take those nubs down. Nubs, nibs, whatever they're called. There we go. And then just a couple of swipes over the whole back end there just to square it off. I have to be very careful not to graze the glass when we do this. Right, let's see how that looks when we fit it. Oh well, that is absolutely stunning. Right, because we've just been sanding, I just want to make sure that's nice and clean on the inside before we glue it into place. Okay, so that is in position. So we'll go in with the extra thin. Hold it into position and glue that back edge. Now, obviously, you've got to be careful because it's a hot glue and you get any on that clear plastic um, and it could fog um, but as long as you're sparing and you don't drip anything on there you'll be fine and the good thing about um, Capilla reaction on clear parts as you can see exactly where your glue's gone. So I know that we've covered all of the full length on those two sides. We're just going to do this little bit here. Where it's not quite sitting as we want it. Right, and we'll just hold that for a sec. If we don't get this perfect, then the following bits that go in won't be perfect either. Right, how long are you prepared to stand and watch this? I'll come back to you in a moment. Right, um, that's in place. Our next part goes there. I've just cleaned it up. There was a little, uh, just as a note, there is a little seam that runs along the um, outside edge about halfway along your join lines so there's a bit of sanding to do um, all the way around on this part right let's have a look at how this fits so there's two little location um, points that keep this from falling in which are um, positioned to be um, in the um, stanchion points so you won't see them in theory well, that just sits there beautifully. That is beautiful. Right. Whilst we've got it sat there, let's get it glued in. Yeah. That's lovely, right. I do want to put a little bit on the 
join between between the two clear parts. So I've just wiped as much glue as I can off. There we go. That'll be enough. Okay, that is step 61 done. So the next part is the large nose piece 15. Now that piece doesn't fit quite as nice. So it's engaging with the plastic on this side really well and on the top. And then here we've got a little gap. That should be easy to fill. That should be easy to fill. It's where the through, there's a little, I don't know if you can see, but where this part, this part, and the, the nose part all come together, you've got a little small rectangular gap, a little swipe of um, putty in there should sort that. Um, I think we're gonna have to manhandle this to close that gap but I don't want to open up other gaps so we might have a small gap to fill um, we could take that back a little bit looks like it might be overhanging a bit of the front do you know what i want to do i want to get the part that goes underneath 14 and just try and test fit that all together and, and see how that fits because if we take a bit of material off the back and move it back a little bit that might help that gap on the side but we don't want to create a problem then at the front Right, so I hold that into place. Now this goes in with that direction. There's no reason we don't we couldn't put this this part in first actually. Yeah, I think that's going to be easy. If we put this one in first, then and we've got that sitting correctly, then we can match up that last part all the way around. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, I've just lost it in there again. Just needs a gentle pinch in. Um, just at this point here where the plastic meets the clear part just needs a gentle pinch in it's, it's 0.2 of a millimeter gap we just want to close that out get that nice and tight then we can look at how we manipulate this all the way around to get it to sit right right glue should be dry or at least strong enough for us to have a play around here so we have a, a problem with a, a gap here and a little rectangle there i'm not bothered about that it's it's the gap if we can close that up without having to fill it that's my ideal so i need to understand how this front edge is lining up with the bottom piece that we just put in 
and whether there's a lip. And if there's a lip, we can move it back slightly, but there isn't. They align perfectly at the front. Okay, brilliant. So what I've got is perfect fit all the way around, except for this little gap here. So for me, I can know I can fill that gap easy enough. So as I've got perfect fit everywhere else, I'm not going to try and resolve the problem because I'll, prob I'll undoubtedly cause other problems and we haven't got excess material to be sanding this lot level. I want that to all be perfect. So let's glue it in while I'm holding it in place. It's a little bit hard to see when when you've got all these join lines on clear parts, but as uh, soon as we put um, some primer down, we'll see any issues we've got. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All, all feels aligned. Right, so that's our glass parts in. Obviously, we've got to make some masks for this lot, um, but we don't need to do that just yet. Um, but I think it would be wise to put masks in place before we do any filling um, and uh, clean-up work so that we don't scuff the glazing so we will do that um, in probably fairly short order um, let's get this back on its stand for a moment right so that has walked us through let me get this out of the way a bit so you can see um, step 60 61 62 63 so in our build pro process we are now looking at the underside. So um, whether you're having these open or closed. Now I'm going to um, paint these separately and then install them um, after painting. And we're gonna put that in as a mask. So that's the next thing I need to do. Okay, important thing to be aware of. If you're gonna do what I'm doing and using this as a mask, some of this is parts we need to use so if you see here, um, if you want that in its closed position for the torpedo, which is my intention, then you are going to have to um, use these outside edges. So when you clean these up, don't just do a shoddy job because you are going to have to uh, use these parts. Right. So let's test fit it. We're just giving it a bit of a clean up. This is, these are off center, so you can't sort of put this in the wrong way around. And what I'm hoping for is a nice little clip in like that. And there we go. We can use that as a mask. So that was a lot easier than faffing around with tape, wasn't it? So that we can cross out because we're not going to do it anyway. Um, so we can clean up these parts and put them to one side ready for painting. Um, and then we can ignore this step because we're not doing that open. Um, because we're going to just reference um, page 17 and just understand that right okay so we fit these parts after we've installed the torpedo okay that makes sense 
Um, well, we'll already have painted the outer surface of that during the um, process that we're going to go through in a minute of, of priming it and painting it. Well, in a minute, not in a minute, but you know what I mean. So we need to preserve that and we can get rid of that. So my next step is 64B and the cleanup of those four parts. Right, just come to clean these parts up. Um, and they're more involved than I was expecting. Uh, there's a little bit of sink behind these tabs, which is unfortunate. Seems to be the case on two, three out of the four. Um, so you've got some surface filling that we're going to have to do. Um, I might come out with a gentle sand. Um, and then on the inside, we've got ejector pin marks and seams and all that. To be honest, I wouldn't worry too much about it because once these are installed in your aircraft, they ain't going to be visible because they sort of slope down. So you're not going to see the inside surface. So you've just got to make sure it's not too lumpy and bumpy. So I'll just do that and same there. So I've just done the outside edges and I'm not going to worry about the inside. You know, don't spend time on tasks that, that you don't need to really. Uh, and we'll see if we can... So this is an 800 sponge. I'm just going to see if we can sand out that. There we go. So no filling or anything. We can clean that up easily with some sponges. So that's what we'll do on those. Um, and like I say, you only need to worry about the outside, outside edges where it might be visible. And only one of them is going to be visible in re reality. So you could just make sure you know which end it is and do that. So these parts will now get put in my little box where we keep our bits that are done and waiting painting as we clean them up and then we don't lose them. Right, with those parts cleaned up, we are now ready to um, move on. Now we've got options here, so that's wing up. Uh, sorry, wheels up. Is that is that wheels up as well? Must must be. Yeah, yeah. So we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that. Um, that's tail wheel. Now we don't want to install that yet. Um, I think we've cleaned that part up, haven't we? Let me just check. I'm sure we have. Yeah, we have. And we've done the wheels as well. So thought I had. So um, we we'll leave that because we need to come back to it. So. Wheels down, so we are now at step 70. I don't want to install these until we've done uh, the painting of the main body, so we're going to leave all that for now as well. Um, it's all painted in the same 56 aluminium, so that can be left as a build on its own right. Um, right, but these here they're getting painted in the body colour so we might as well paint them at the same time so we can get those cleaned up can't we we've already done that and then that can be installed later and that can be installed later so we've got those that we can clean up for painting um, and then we've got some fittings on the aircraft that we need to do and then we're on the turret so my next job is that
So I've cleaned up the parts for the next handful of steps and we're basically adding some some details onto the aircraft surface here. Um, some of them I think will be easier than others. Now the important thing about these little parts is they flare out to one side so you need to make sure that you've got them right. They are different numbers but they um, they need to flare to the right um, to the um, corner of the wing. Yep, so that one's correct. Therefore this one must be correct, mustn't it? Okay, so once we've got those in, we can just drop a spot of glue into that and uh, job done. Okay, that's nice. Um, and then we've got this item here. Now this is going to be a bit trickier. So we've got three points there go into the, these little grooves here. So it's not an overly positive fit. Why they've not done a pegging hole thing, I don't know. The spacing between these little tabs here, the uprights, is different. So got to get it the right way around. And I just didn't. There we go. So I'm going to glue the middle one in first. Make sure that's down. And then that should help me align the other two. We'll just make sure they're making contact. They seem to be. So that was the one I thought would be the most difficult. So. That's good, because it wasn't difficult. I'm just moving my um, support out one so we don't accidentally knock that part that we just glued on. Okay, so we've got these little parts here, which uh, fit into these little recesses. So they're both the same number, therefore they must be identical. Which way around do they go? Right, taper, yeah, I did have it right, taper facing towards the back. Right, I put a bit of glue in and then we can correct its position. There we go. Interestingly, this one's in a different place. It's it's set further back. Well, I don't know why that would be. There we go. That's sitting nicely. Just make sure all perfectly square and they are that's lovely so that is step 80 81 82 83 and 84 in the bag so we come on to the turret next um, and then we've got fitting the turret and then we've got Right, a gun that goes on this area here. Right. And that's got a clear part. Okay. So, I th right, okay. That's interesting. A little backwards firing gun. Right, okay. So, I think what we can do is we can put that on after we've painted yeah so yeah um, so we can leave that for the moment and torpedo is done A torpedo cradle is different color to the exterior and 
then we'll one item there, then it's clear parts. Right, so on the back page, there's a couple of items here that we can fit um, and make sure we've got no gaps and stuff before we paint. So let's look at these parts on the final step um, and get them on. Right, that pretty much gets us as far as we can with building up the aircraft ready for painting. So, next thing is just to go around and fill any gaps, mainly on this uh, area here, on, on the um, uh, air scoops, a little bit of tidy up around the bottom of the ring, wing root, and that is it for tidy up on this. Um, just need to have a look at these, but I think we're okay. Um, I think we're going to prime and see what happens is what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to going to fill these very quickly. Then we're going to sort those out, um, and we've got this little gap here that we need to remember at the same time. Then when they're done, it's masking. So sponge and what have you. So let's get on with filling. Right, we're going to use um, some of this plastic putty. I've, some people appear to really hate it and I don't know why. Um, it's like anything, uh, right product for the right job. Um, it's not a hard putty that you can then sand, but you know, you don't use it for those sort of jobs. You use it for the sort of jobs where you can just fill a hairline gra uh, gap and move on. That's the whole point of it. So let's uh, let's do that. Done. Can't do that with squadron putty. Yeah. So it's about using the right product for the right job. And it's really easy to clean up. So where we've got it in these panel lines and we don't want it, I can just whip that out with a knife. There you go. Done. Right. We're also going to use it for this job here. So we've got this little triangle, sorry, rectangle, I should say.
wasn't sure if this was going to be too big a gap and it might be it should be a really real pain if it is I'm going to give it another go Right, okay, so what we can do now is a bit of rubbing alcohol on a pointy uh, swab and clean that up. Job done. Right. <coughs> Don't think we've got anything else we need to clean up. So <coughs> this side of priming, I'm happy that we've done the hairline cracks. We've now got to have a look at this major work at the back of the front end here. So <coughs> we need a different product. So we're going to use Deluxe Materials Perfect Plastic Putty in the first instance. So I'm just putting very small amounts on, working it into the gap. Okay, so what we can do now while this putty is still uh, wet is we can work it into the joints where we want it and try and get rid of any access. Then when we sand it, that should um, hopefully just smooth out because we've pushed it into the gaps. and. The, but we need to fill the gap up, not just sort of cover the surface of it, if that makes sense. If you just cover the surface as we sand it, we'll find that we sand the um, filler out or go past where the filler's gone, da gone down to. So got to work it in a little bit. Okay, happy with that side. Okay. 
Now this filler doesn't melt the plastic. Um, I didn't think it was necessary to use, um, well, effectively a hot filler. But we'll see. I might be wrong and we might have to use a hot filler if we can't bond the, fill these gaps up. That's our next plan. Okay, right, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to clean my knife up. Right then, hopefully we've got this filled up and we will see how we get on now. Let's move that out of the way. So um, I've cut a little wedge off my um, emery board and that gives me a nice little point to get in. I don't like cutting up the sponges and stuff, but emery boards, yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm going to use the coarse side to start with on this top and just bring that level, which means we'll put a flat on it, but we'll shape it afterwards. Okay, and now I'm just going to shape it, go around the edge there. Make sure we've not lost the rounded corner, and sort of the rounded edge if you like. Um, and now again with the coarse side, I'm just going to run down the side there. And most of what we're doing is actually just removing filler at this stage and getting it down to just the plastic and we should see the gap then emerge hopefully is a nice filled white line there we go so that's looking good i'm going to change to the less coarse side now for this bit because i don't want to take too much material away it was just a little gap where this part met the wing. Okay, and then back to course and we can do this other side now. Okay, that gives us our basic shape. Just gonna make sure I've got not lost my curve. Right, and now we can go in with something a bit finer. So 800 grit, just to start with. Circular motions helps keep it flat. And then we'll just go around and keep that curve. Okay, that's not looking too shabby. So next job, we can get a sponge. So um, we've just done an 800. So if we drop down to a thousand, then that's looking all right now. Now, it, once we give it a prime, it might show up stuff that we can't see now, but for now, that is looking okay. Yeah. 
So I'll crack on and do the same with this one. Um, I just think we might want to just make sure we've got no uh, grit scrubbing marks in there. Yeah, happy with that. Happy with that. That definitely looks a lot better. So I'll sort this one out and then I think next job will probably be putting some sponge in um, and then we're going to have to cut all those um, lovely masks. <laughs> right, our next job is to do some masking and we'll start with the top. So um, I have all sorts of bits and pieces of sponge that I've used for masking before um, and eventually you have to throw them away but if they're not too bad um, I'll try and use them several times you know um, so it's just finding something that might be the right size and uh, do the job so I'm going to try plugging this into there Yeah, I think a little bit of tape just on the bottom edge there where you can't you can't cover the little arm that the uh, machine gun mounts onto. So we'll need a little bit of tape. So I'm just going to push that behind that and then we can tape that bit off. So uh, let's have a look, see what we've got. Oh, that's no good. I've got a bit of tape here that was actually used for marking a sprue bag in the GMC truck build. So if I trim the edge and we've got a nice straight line then. Right. It's a bit too long. I don't want anything overhanging because it might just stop the evenness of the spray. So I'm just going to trim it. Right, I think that's not nicely covered. Now we have to think about the back section. And I've got, I've got something that's almost the right shape. So I'm hoping we can just slot that in at the back. Brilliant, perfect. And then we've got the uh, hole for the um, turret. Oh, my brain's on slow this morning. Right, there we go. I'm happy with that. So now we can flick it over and look at how we're going to do that. And again, it's going to be because these don't. I don't think these got fully covered, so we can't mask with plastic parts. So let's see what we've got that we could shove in there. That might do, might it? That might be a bit too big. Let's have a go. Hmm, I'm thinking we might be better with tape across to about this point 
and then stuff it with uh, a sponge. So let's try that. There we go. Right. I'm not going to subject you to watching me do another one, but we are going to do a little bit in there. So I've um, got another one of these small pieces. I'm going to squash it down, fill it in. And then we can let it expand and fill the hole. There we go. Right. I'll get that one done. And then we're on uh, doing masking.
Hi, and thanks for watching. You can support the channel by hitting the like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any content that I put out. Model Kit Stuff is a self-funded channel, and um, I don't do membership or Patreon or buy me a coffee. So if you'd like to further donate to the channel and ensure the cameras keep rolling and the content keeps coming, then you can consider making a donation uh, through my PayPal. You will find a link to that in the text below. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you soon.